The Dharmapada is a collection of verses uttered by the Buddha on various occasions throughout his life. Behind each verse there is a story. This is one such story. This is the story of Tisa the Fat. The elder Tisa was the cousin of the Buddha. He was quite old when he decided to join the Buddha's Sangha and rather fat. He wore the finest robes and tended to sit in the centre of the monastery in the Hall of State, a very prominent position. One day a group of elders visiting the monastery came to the Hall of State and seeing Tisa sitting in such a prominent position assumed he must be a great elder. So they approached him with reverence and asked whether they might have the privilege of waiting upon him, offering, among other things, to rub his feet. Tisa said nothing, and this is the traditional way to grant consent. So the visiting monks began to wait upon him. A young monk resident in the monastery saw this happen with some disbelief. So he approached Tisa and tentatively asked, Elder, how many seasons have you been in the Sangha? Tisa replied, No seasons at all. I've just joined the Sangha. I joined when I was very old. The younger monk was shocked. He said, You wretched monk, you overestimate your own importance. Seeing before you these great elders, you are not even civil to them. To their offers of various services, you answer by silence. Moreover, you show not the slightest concern or regret for your misconduct. Now Tisa took great umbrage at this, and recovering the pride of the warrior caste, he asked, Whom did you come to see? The monks answered, We came to see the teacher. But with reference to me, you say, Who is he? and overwrought with pride and hurt feelings, he rushed off to see the teacher. The monk said, if he goes alone, he may cause trouble. So they went with him, paid obeisance to the teacher, and sat down respectively on one side. The teacher asked, Tisa, how is it you come to me so sad and sorrowful with tears in your eyes? Tisa answered the teacher, Reference, sir, these monks are abusing me. But where were you sitting? In the centre of the monastery, in the Hall of State, Reverend Sir. Did you see these monks when they came in? Yes, Reverend Sir, I saw them. Did you rise and go and meet them? No, Reverend Sir, I did not. Did you offer to take their monastic utensils? No, Reverend Sir, I did not offer to take them. Did you offer to wait upon them? And to provide water for them to drink? No, Reverend Sir, I did not offer to do any of these things. Tisa, you should have performed all of these services for these elders, for he who does not do this has no right to sit in the centre of the monastery. You alone are to blame. Ask pardon of these monks. But they abuse me, Reverend Sir. I will not ask their pardon. Tisa, do not act thus. You alone are to blame, ask their pardon. I will not ask their pardon, Reverend Sir. The monks said to the teacher, He is a very obstinate monk, Reverend Sir. The teacher replied, Monks, this is not the first time he has proved so obstinate. He was obstinate also in a previous state of existence. And at this point, the Buddha related this story of the past. Once upon a time, there was a matted hair ascetic called Devala who spent eight months of the year in the Himalaya country. But during the rainy season, he liked to come to the city of Benares. On this occasion, he came to the city and went to the potter's hall because he heard monks were welcome there. The potter said he could stay at night because there was no work done during that time. Shortly after Devla went in, another ascetic called Narada arrived, and the potter said he should check with Devla to see if he was happy to let him stay there too. 
Narada approached Devala and asked him, would it be okay for him to stay that night? Devala said yes, he was welcome. It was a large hall with plenty of space. Now before settling down for the night, Narada checked to see where Devala planned to sleep and the position of the door. But when it came time to lay down, instead of laying in his proper place, Devala lay across the doorway. So when Narada got up at night, he trod on Devala's hair. Devala cried out, False ascetic, you come here from the forest and tread on my hair? Narada said it was not his fault. He did not know that Devala had changed the place where he had chosen to sleep. Narada went out, but Devala was very bitter, crying as if his heart would break. Now, for reasons best known to himself, Devala got Narada to tread on him again, by lying in the doorway again, but this time with his head and his feet in opposite directions. It was as if he was trying to find something to complain about. Sure enough, Narada returned in the dark, thinking he was stepping over Devala's feet, but ended up stepping on Devala's neck. Devla jumped up, complaining and crying, and in his fury, swore to curse Narada. He said that when the sun rose, its rays would split Narada's head into seven pieces. Narada protested his innocence, and in the heat of the moment, he declared that when the sun rose, its rays would split the head of the one who was guilty and to blame. Having made this declaration, though, Narada had second thoughts. He was an ascetic of significant attainment and could see far into the future, so he could see that when the sun rose, the curse would fall on Devala, and out of compassion, Narada summoned all his psychic power to prevent the sun from rising, and so splitting Devala's head. Not surprisingly, the people of Benares were thrown into a panic when the sun did not rise, and petitioned the king to do something. The king could see there was some great magic at play here, and asked whether any holy men had recently come to the city. He was directed to the potter's barn. Narada explained the whole story to the king, saying that he had made Devla's curse fall upon the one who was to blame, and sure enough, that would be Devla. To lift the curse, Devla merely had to beg Narada's pardon. So the king commanded Devala to beg forgiveness in order that the sun could rise. But Devala refused. He called Narada a false ascetic and seethed with anger. The king commanded him again and even tried to force him to bow down by ordering his men to take Devala by his hands and feet and throw him to the ground. But Narada said this was not done of his own free will, so it would not work. Finally, Narada said to Devala, I pardon you. But Narada needed to do more than that to make sure Devala was safe. He asked the king to take Devala to a lake, where a lump of clay was placed on Devala's head. Then Narada released his spell on the sun and allowed it to rise, at the same time telling Devala to get into the lake and sink below the water as the sun's rays were breaking through the darkness. And when he did this, sure enough, the clay remained on the surface, and the sun's rays broke it into seven pieces. In the meantime, Devla jumped out of the lake and ran away, and that was the last that was seen of him. This ends the story of the past. The Buddha said, at that time, Ananda was the king, Devala was Tisa, and I myself was Narada. Then he addressed Tisa. Tisa, if a monk thinks, so and so abused me, so and so struck me, so and so defeated me, his hatred never ceases. But if he does not cherish such thoughts, his hatred ceases. The Buddha then pronounced the following stanzas. He abused me, he beat me, he defeated me, he robbed me. The hatred of those who harbour such thoughts is not appeased. He abused me, he beat me, he defeated me, he robbed me. The hatred of those who do not harbour such thoughts is appeased.